Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be going over the history of the Dardanian faction in RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6 Point five. This is taken from a longer interview video that I did with one of the historians for the mod team, Jottle. So check that out down in the description below. Make sure you like and subscribe, guys, and I'll see you all in the video. Um, so we have the Labiateans. Um, they are around uh, Lake Labiatus, <laughs> um, and that's probably where they got their name from. Um, they, there are more settlements around it, but um, Skodra and Meteon are their main settlements in the sources. Um, and yeah, they, they are kind of interesting in the way in that the tribe itself is not really that notable. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like their, their king really is their last king because he is called, um, it's, it's Gentios. Um, Gentios is called. Um, he, I, he shouldn't be alive yet, I think. <laughs> no, not yet. No, because he he gets beaten some somewhere in in the 160s BC, and um, so yeah, um, Gentios is called the last Illyrian king. Um, mm. Also meant um, Illyria proper, like um, the South Illyria that the Greeks always refer to, and. Um, yeah, the Labiataeans, they're probably just um, one of the many, many smaller Illyrian tribes um, that we really can't all represent. Um, and to the RDI, I previously mentioned the RDI uh, with Agron and Teuta. And they're probably just allies of them. So we have um, in Teuta. And she has a general called Skerdilaidas. Um and he, um, if I remember correctly, he kind of takes over <laughs> the um, basically Illyria after um, after the Ar RDI. Um, since. Yeah, the, the Romans restrict the RDI movements to Lissos, F, as you have shown in your video. Yeah. And um, so Agron dies, right? Then there's a que uh, the war with Queen Teuta. And after she gets beaten and restricted to north of Lissos, and um, she is just the region for, um, for her son, uh, Pinus. And mm -hmm. Pinus dies quite early. And after that, you get um, Demetrios of Pharos, um, which is in the north. It's a small Greek settlement near Issa. There, Pharos. Yeah. Um, Demetrios of Pharos is a um, general. He's called an Illyrian by, um, by Polybius, but I think he just is a bit, um, <laughs> you know against half Greeks, non-Greeks. Um, he's probably somewhat Greek. Um, Demetrius, I mean, he, he has a Greek name. He's probably also somewhat Illyrian. Um, we can't really say. And um, he is a general for um, Philip V. And as Polybius repeatedly emphasizes, a really bad influence. <laughs> and um, he's also seemingly very opportunistic and he kind of takes control of of the remnants of the Illyrian kingdom that get left behind by the, by the RDI. And um, he also fights with the Romans in, I think, the Second Illyrian War. Um, and yeah, they they beat him. They um, take away his territory, which is also in Pharos, Issa, and Kokura. And um, so then, and um, his general is also Skadilaidas. Um, and he switches sides to the Romans, so he becomes the new king of Illyria now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, he he um, founds a new dynasty, and it's probably uh, uh, the Lab Labiatian dynasty that he um, he's the founder of. And he is very loyal to the Romans. Um, previously, under Demetrius, he was a pirate. <laughs> and um, <laughs> as as they tend to be, yeah. and um, <laughs> um, 
So he he becomes a loyal ally to the Romans. He also fights on the side of the um, the Romans against Philip, I think, or at least the son does. Um, he has a son called Pleuratos, um, a popular name in Illyria. Mm. <laughs> and um, Pleuratos is the Illyrian king at the time who invades Macedon together with the Dardanians. Um, so this is a quite loyal. Um, ally to the Romans in the area who are very interested in Illyria even though there's not a lot of focus on Illyria because it's kind of their backyard yeah um, there's a really nice um, map that kind of shows the the connection of the Adriatic Sea to Cisalpine Gaul and um, that Illyria is kind of the key to, to holding Cisalpine Gaul because it is such a um, fertile landscape that can easily get ravaged by piracy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you have this war against Teuta um, in 200, um, in the 200, early 220s BC. You have the the conquest of Cisalpine Gaul, and then you have the war against Demetrius in 220, 219 BC. Um, so the Romans kind of fight these wars back to back and they really care that that their coast is clean from piracy yeah um so that's that's why they um even before they expand to iberia which is which are much more famous campaigns um they really poke a, around a lot in in illyria to to kind of secure some allies and um lawyer kings because illyria has a lot of kings a lot of um, nobility and a lot of minor tribes and they just hope that, that they can get some loyal kings who, who take care of the whole thing. Um, and Skerdilaidas and Pleuratos, they are the Labiatine kings, loyal to Rome and they rule from basically Lyssos, Etion and Skodra up to, um, to Dalmatia. So um, they should even have like what we gave um, the Adia at the moment, Nestos, um, so this whole coast, basically. Yeah. And um, when Pleuratos dies, um, it's of course, every time a king dies, it's a weakening of the dynasty. Mm. So a new tribe on the horizon takes um, takes this as an opportunity to attack, and those are the Dermate. This is where they appear for the first time, and they attack um, the Isaian, the colonies of Tragurion and Epetion, which are new settlements we um, gave them, and um, they attack the they attack the the Orsoi, um, also an ally of Rome. Like like I said, Rome secures a lot of allies in in this area. Yeah. Um. So after Pleuratos dies, Gentios becomes king, and. Um, at a similar time, Philip V dies and um, his son Perseus becomes king. And Perseus tries to um, tries to get Gentius on his side, to have, have Illyria on his side. And um, yeah, bo they both fail spectacularly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this third Illyrian war against Gentius um, is, is really, really short. It is said that the war was over before it reached reached Rome. Um, one source says it is 20 days, one other source says the war goes 30 days. Um, because, um, and you can look at, at a minor Illyrian faction again for that, um, Gentius prepares a lot of ships, a lot of troops, I think he has like 15,000 men uh, and a few hundred boats. And the first thing he goes for are the um, Illyrian allies of the Romans, like uh, Rison and um, other minor Illyrian peoples like um, uh, the Indurnion, um, scroll over uh, to the south. Uh, yeah, the uh, Kawoi or Kavi, um, depending on, on the language you use. And they have some castles in like this border area between Illyria and Dardania. And he goes for it and kind of fails. <laughs> <laughs> and like like I said, the Romans invade really, really quickly and the, the war is over in like 20 to 30 days. And um, 
Gentios is the last Illyrian king. And um, also known for being kind of rude and very drunk, which is a typical <laughs> stereotype for uh, for Illyrians that they are constantly drunk. Mm. Um, we, we get back to that later. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, um, he is the last Illyrian king. And after that, the Romans... Um, punish the Illyrians really harshly, um, except their allies, I think, um, except the Daorsi, I think, except Rison, um, Bullis, the Partinoi and the Talantians, I think, except for them, they plunder like all of Illyria. <laughs> yeah. As a, as a punishment. Um, everyone who hasn't switched sides quickly enough in this short war um which the Aussie did they they start out as allies of of the Illyrians and then quickly switch sides to the Romans yeah um so they, they get spared and yeah so this really doesn't go well and um, <laughs> it's at this point Roman really has a firm foot in Illyria um in in southern Illyria um yeah. the north is a whole different uh, issue <laughs> <laughs> cool um i don't think i've got any questions on on these guys so um uh, oh we've we've got the units so i, I think these guys have some unique units uh, they, they get, get two. they get their own Thirio Foroi after uh, after some reforms and right. Do they get? Uh, I think. It, oh, they get light infantry, don't they? Labeate yes. and light infantry. There we go. Yes. Some light infantry boyos for them as well. Cool. Well, uh, let's move on to the uh, RDAI then. Oh, oh, really, really quickly, one last yep. thing. Well, one last thing. Um, Gentius does mint coins in in Skodra, and this is what we gave as a faction symbol. This um, this uh, Lembos ship um, with the two prongs and the Illyrian sea snake beneath and I really like this symbol uh, I think it's quite beautiful and yeah so um, if you look up Illyrian coins these Skodra coins are probably among the first to show up so um, yeah cool yeah and these were minted by often minted by Gentios or in Skodra um, by the Labiate. there we go guys thank you very much for watching the video of course you can check out the longer video down in the description below make sure you do like and subscribe and I'll see you all again on the next video